What is going on guys? My name is Sefti. Welcome to the channel. This is one of my biannual videos that I post on this YouTube channel because I don't post very often specifically on this channel. Anyways, this video is going to be about building a 3900X streaming rig. The last streaming rig I built was about three years ago during Rise of Iron for Destiny. I have a separate gaming PC. It is a i7-7700K with a 1080Ti in there. That's getting a little older now. It's two years old, but I stream at 1080p and I play at 1080p. I don't really need to upgrade it right now. If I was into 4K gaming and trying to maintain 60 FPS or 100 FPS in 4K, or if I was doing 1440, then I'd change things up. But right now, I don't really need to change that, so I'm sticking with the i7 on that until uh, another generation. But for the streaming rig, I've definitely been noticing some, uh, some slowness. I've been looking for some potential upgrades in the streaming rig. Uh, currently, it has a i7-6800K with a GTX 960 graphics card. Old. Old technology, but I didn't game on that rig. It was streaming and some light video editing in the past. I'm changing things up to do a lot more 4K editing. As you can see, this is in 4K, 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 4K. My wife and I have been doing a lot more music recently. We're releasing videos, jam videos on our Tefty and Memes channel, and it is featuring a lot more camera angles and 4K stuff and all that. And I just, I need a better rig for editing that footage. Also, the export times could be significantly better, all that stuff. So this rig is going to be a significant upgrade because I'm going to be going to, like I said, a 3900X. I'm not going big on the graphics card. I'm going with a 1660 Super Overclock, OC Overclock Edition uh, from uh, Asus, They're the Asus Tough. Uh, so that's going to be going in there too. In fact, I guess now's the time to start showing the parts. So first things first, we have the AMD chip. Look at that, baby. A 3900X. With its PCIe 4 ready, oh my god. So yes, this is, a, this is a really nice chip. Runs about $500 new. The motherboard that I chose is the Asus Prime X570 Pro. Uh, it has got, it's got enough features and bells and whistles and it's missing the things that I don't care about. Uh, I'm not gonna do any extreme overclocking because I don't need to and I don't need Wi-Fi. I have never used Wi-Fi in any of my towers. I always plug them in via ethernet, so I don't see a reason why I would ever need Wi-Fi in this, um, this rig. And I don't need an absolute crap load of USB ports either. So this is plenty right here. This is plenty. I don't need, I don't need any more than that. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this board performs. I'm a fan of Asus. Uh, they've typically been really strong in the past. I've owned a lot of different motherboards in the past. So really it comes down to BIOS and these 570 chipsets seem to be pretty solid overall. So I'm looking forward to this one. I think this board ran me about 200, 225, somewhere around there. So RAM, I decided to go with some G-Skill Trident Z Neo. It's 32 gigs and it is uh, 3600, it's um, CL16. I believe this is the recommended type of RAM for these AMD chips. Um, if it's not, I'm going to be disappointed, but I'm pretty sure this was all exactly what I needed for the type. Uh, I decided to go with 32 gigs. I didn't go with 64 because I don't know if I need 64. If it turns out that I am maxing out 32 gig easily for any of the 4K editing that I'm doing, then I'll just buy another set of this. This ran me, I think about 150, 170, somewhere around there. So not, mm, I mean, it's not cheap, but it's also not like crazy expensive either. So definitely doable to get another um, another pair of 32 gigs if I need it. Next up, we've got some hard drive storage. What did I go with for storage? I went with the Rocket NVMe PCIe M.2 2280 controller SSD. What terabyte? Oh my God. <laughs> now some of you might be asking, why did I go with PCIe 3 instead of 4? Uh, I did some research. It doesn't seem like any of the things that I'm gonna be doing would actually really get affected by PCIe 4. And this technology, or PCIe 4 technology for the M.2s is still pretty new. They're uh, clocking in around five gigabyte read write speed. And the PCIe 4 spec, I think is around seven gigabytes read and write that it potentially has. So there's there's a lot of room to grow right there. So I'm, I'm not investing in, um, in those drives until there's actually some serious performance gains that would make sense for me. And like, it, in fact, right now, if you're copying large amounts of data, always, to multiple drives, always, then it makes sense because you can copy that stuff back and forth all the time. The biggest stuff that I'm copying right now is some 4K footage, but it only happens like once every few days when I make a video. So it doesn't really make sense. 
So yeah, one with one of these, that's gonna be in one of my M.2 slots. Uh, this board has two M.2 slots. I'll also be using a Samsung 960 Evo that is currently in my current streaming rig. Uh, it's one terabyte. So I'm gonna be popping that thing out and putting it in this rig as well. So that'll be both, um, both M.2 slots taken up right there. I'll probably make the Sabrent, mm, like a scratch disc, something like that. Something that I need for super fast storage. And then the, uh, the 960 Evo is gonna be my main footage drive. Then I've got a Crucial MX500 SATA SSD. This is gonna be my boot drive. It's 500 gig, I think that's plenty. I'm not gonna be putting much on there aside from the OS, some downloads, maybe an application or two, obviously Adobe. Yeah, those type of things. Uh, and then I've also got a two terabyte SSD Crucial MX500 as well, that's gonna be overall various storage. So I'm getting rid of all spinning disks. I do have two spinning disks in my other rig right now, uh, but those are gonna stay in there. I'll be utilizing this stuff in the back of the case that holds the SATA drives, which I'll show you. Here is the case. It is a Corsair 220T Airflow or something or another like that. This baby ought to get the job done. I don't need a massive rig. Again, it's just having a 1660 Super that's gonna go in there. So it doesn't have to be, um, doesn't have to be a big case. Again, I'm not using a, I won't be using the hard drive uh, carriage underneath. So hopefully I'll be saving some room right there as well. It comes with three RGB fans. Will I be using those? Probably, I mean RGB. It makes the computer go faster. If you didn't know, 69% increase in speed if you use RGB. Last but not least, the power supply. I went with a Corsair RM650 power supply. Uh, it's got a 80 plus gold on there. Uh, the previous one I did, it was like 850. It was definitely overbuilt, but I was thinking I was gonna reuse that power supply. And then I kind of hemmed and odd back and forth a bunch. I'm like, well, the computer's three years old. I've been using it pretty heavily almost daily for a lot of computing and maybe I should just get a brand new power supply. So I ended up going with something very modest. The 650, RM650. Uh, looks like it's got, it should have everything I need for this build. If it doesn't, I'm gonna be sad. Now, before we get into things, let me show you guys the case right here, the insides. So as you can see, it's got a nice tempered glass type of thing right here. Um, it doesn't have a handle door type of thing. My other one has that, it's also from Corsair, but that's definitely not a big deal at all. I don't have to be popping this thing open all the time. Um, yeah, it looks like it's really nice and efficient, which is what I'm looking for in this type of rig. A nice, efficient case that gets the job done. Let's pop this off. Like so. Is that the plastic on there? It is plastic on there. We'll do that later. So yeah, it looks pretty nice in here. Got some cables for some fan controller stuff. Obviously the things that connect up top. The only thing that I didn't like about this case, which I ended up being okay with ultimately, is that there's no USB-C port on the top. This would have been nice to have a USB-C on top because um, that's what I'm using for uh, transferring footage off of the SD cards from cameras. Uh, but I mean, if I have to just plug it in the back, that's not really a big deal, so that's fine. As you guys can see the back side right here, it's got some uh, black covers right here instead of white, which kind of gives a nice little contrast. I know some people might like that, might not. Got a dust pan on the bottom. You can pull out for the, the uh, power supply. Oops. There we go. Uh, also what's nice is this is magnetic on the very top. So it just pops right off like that. As you can see, magnetic strips. Let's go right there. And let's take a look at the front again. So this front part also has a dust tray. I'm not entirely sure how to pop this thing off. I see some of these clips are right here. I think I'm just gonna leave it right there. I don't wanna mess with it because I wanna get into building this baby. I'm very excited about building it, guys. Very, very excited. Okay. What a beautiful set of components. I'm excited to build it. So what I'm gonna start out with is the power supply because I want to plug in the power supply and that way I have a direct ground that I can touch and always be grounded and disconnect any kind of static. Uh, I know some of you guys get super, 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 super finicky about the whole static thing, whether or not using the static something or another and all that stuff. I've built a lot of PCs in the past. I've never fried any electronics. However, I am very aware over making sure I touch grounded objects to dis 
charge any static electricity that has built up in my body. Um, that's how I've done things in the past. So I'm going to continue to do that. Again, you just have to make sure you're touching a metal piece that is grounded. So one of the easiest ways is your power supply. Make sure you plug it in, turn it off obviously, and then you have a direct connection to the ground. Before we get started though, I want to open up the motherboard. Have a look at this. Yeah. Look at that baby. Wow. Let's pop this thing out. Very nice looking motherboard. Beautiful. Got a fan right there. This comes with all those the 570s. Fan to, uh, to help cool the board. So it's got a M.2 cover right here. Heat sink. And then this one does not have a heat sink. Very nice looking. Prime. I'm gonna set that on the desk. What else do we got here? We've got some SATA cables. Your uh, basic SATA cable. Okay. We've got some jumper thingies. All right, what else we got? We got some extra board connecting thingamadoos as well. Great. We got a nice little prime user guide right there. We got a CD, DVD, that I could totally throw into something. So we got the user manual. Absorb thy knowledge. Absorb. Absorb. <laughs> oh, one thing that I forgot to mention is I'm going, I'm sticking with the, the stock cooler for Ryzen. Again, I'm not planning on doing any kind of crazy overclocking. So it already has an RGB cooler in it. And I thought, why not? I'll just go with that. It's, is it as cool as some custom cooling solution? No, obviously. But this is not a rig that's supposed to break scores or boundaries or pop holes into the fabric of time and space. It is supposed to be a bread and butter streaming slash 4K editing rig that is solid. That's what I'm going for. So I decided to stick with the basic cooler that comes with uh, the Ryzen chip. If I end up having problems with it, then yeah, I'll end up swapping it out. Uh, I don't think I'll have problems though. That would be really weird if I did. That was an exciting unboxing. Oh my God, my heart's pounding. Okay, next up, I want to make sure I unbox the, uh, the power supply so I can plug it in and have a direct ground no matter what. All right, Corsair power supply. Wow, look at that. Let's get this box out first. We've got a nice bundle of cables right here. Sick bundle, sick bundle, yes. Oh yeah, all the cables right there. It's modular PSU, so I'll be able to um, use what I need and not use whatever I don't need. Look at these, some cable management ties, guys. Will I use these? We'll find out. <laughs> Important information. Okay, PSU. Warning, this bag should stay away from anything that can die. Got it. Mm -hmm. Sound operation mode to low to moderate loads in this fan will, the fan will not spin in silent operation mode. Uh, well, that's always nice, especially with it being a, an efficient 80 plus power, uh, 80 plus gold power supply. There it is, guys. Okay. Okay, so I plugged it in so I can actually touch this to discharge any static electricity. Electricity if I needed. Uh, but we need the case now. We are going to pop off the back here. Actually, how does the back come off? It comes off like this. Got my trusty screwdriver. Streamer grade. Comes built in with streamer perks. Open this up. 
Yeah, we didn't look at this yet, actually. This is the back of the case. So here is where the two SATA drives are gonna sit. SATA drive one, SATA drive two. It's a nice, convenient spot to keep things out of the out of the way. Uh, here's the hard drive storage bay, which I am going to remove out of there because I don't need it. Uh, here's some extra screws. Some screws. All right. And more ties. Look at that. It's telling me. Manage those cables. Do it, Tefty. Manage those cables. So it looks like I have to unscrew this and then unscrew these screws on the bottom to be able to pop out the case or the, the hard drive bay here. Because again, I don't plan on putting that stuff in there. So might as well just keep it nice and clean. I can always put it back if I want. If ultimately I'm like, yeah, maybe I do want these spinning drives in there. I like the idea of not having any spinning drives in my rig, because it's 2020, guys. There we go. Hard drive bay for the, the spinning drives. Put this back right here, where it belongs. I'll hold onto this just in case. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna throw it out, but like, I'm put off to the side in case I do want to see if I can experiment with that. Screws for the power supply. All right, it seems to be installed. So technically with this plugged in, it should be grounded. Being said, it's connected to actual power. Now would be the time to start putting the board. Got some peeling to do. Yup. <laughs> okay, that was a really nice snug fit, which is great. Four more screws, and we're good. I believe the motherboard is fastened securely to the case. All right, I'm gonna get a game plan of how I wanna route some of this power. All right, I have done some power connections and a little bit of cable management type of stuff. I also installed the two MX500 drives. As you can see right here, I got the, the 500 gig right here and I got the two terabyte one right here. This is gonna be the boot drive. This is gonna be miscellaneous stuff, you know, just extra storage. Um, I begin connecting up a few of these cables and starting to kind of figure out how I wanna keep this cleanish, sort of managed. Um, so that's that's been happening. Uh, my board only came with two SATA, drive, or SATA cables. Um, one had a L thing, which Kind of wish they were both straight. I don't have, um, yeah, I don't have another SATA cable. I couldn't find one. I mean, I could strip one out of a PC that I have, but they're all on at the moment. I don't really want to take those out yet. So I might end up replacing a SATA cable in the future. But for now, it's fine. It's working, or it's connected at least. Uh, we need to install the CPU. In fact, in the manual, it says I should have installed the CPU first, then put the board in the case. Whatever, you know, I think it's fine. <laughs> So let's spin this around and start opening up the, uh, the CPU. Here's what it's looking like so far. Got the Ryzen box. Let's open this baby. Well, well, well. The Ryzen chip. The third gen Ryzen 3900X. Looking very swanky. Cool. What else we got here? Some quick little mini instructions. Installation instructions for your new CPU. Let's have a look at this. Yes, pin indicators. 
Uh, fans, gently tighten screws to retention hooks. Carefully place heat sink on a processor. Let's have a look at this uh, cooler. Fairly heavy. Open this up. Thermal paste, already applied to it. Okay, cool. I was curious about that. A little close, close inspection there. Thermal paste. Yeah, cool. A couple cables as well that come with the cooler. I need to do some reading to make sure I do this correctly. So you have to make sure that these pins line up perfectly. If you don't, you will bend them. And that is awful. So you can see there's a little triangle right there. And also you can tell that the the way that the pins are spaced on each corner is an indicator of how this is supposed to go in. So you can see there's a notch on this one. Not only is there a triangle, but there's also a notch, a square notch out of the pins. If you look at the pins right here, you probably can't see it because the camera's like the way it is, but the notch is right here. So you have to line the notch up with this, and it should be good. You just sink right in. No problem at all. There we go. Our CPU is installed on the board. Praise our Jesus. The instructions are not entirely clear on this. I could watch a YouTube video, but I'm pretty sure what happens is these little things, these side deals clip onto these in the board and then you pull this and it brings it taut there we go thing was kind of stubborn is officially secured to the chip. Now the CPU is in there and the uh, cooler is installed. It's time to put the RAM in there. Let me read up on the RAM real quick. Same the two light gray ones right here. Let's do that. <clears throat> All right, open up my RAM. Triton Z Nero, let's get it. G skill uh, badge. Tried it. Next stick. Rams installed. Fast forward just a little bit. I have uh, officially put the M.2 drives in. I said I wasn't going to do that initially, and I was like, you know what? We might as well start putting them in. I also wired up a bunch of cables, uh, kind of managed a little bit of stuff. I also turned off my other PC so I can pull out the graphics card. And it is this guy. This is the 1660 Super Overclock Asus Tough. That's what it looks like, yep. There's the connections on the back. This is going to be my bread and butter 4K editing card. It's gonna get the job done. So yeah, just a quick note. Again, I said uh, I was taking the 960 Evo, the Samsung 960 Evo. M.2 for my other computer, so that I just pulled that drive out and I installed the Sabrent, Subrent, whatever it is, one terabyte uh, into the board. So looking good right there. Okay. Let's pop this baby in. Real easy nothing crazy didn't have to push hard or anything like that graphics card installed memories installed m.2s are installed cpu with the coolers installed all the power cables are hooked up uh let's see we also have the two sata drives hooked up in the back as well let's have a look actually 
So to drive, so to drive. Hooked up the power for this stuff as well. Uh, I need to tie these cables, but we gotta make sure everything's working first before we do anything like that. Also one thing, I did not install the uh, one of the M.2 heat sinks because I wanna make sure it's working and not have any issues because this is like an adhesive type of thing or it's sticky. So I'd rather not attach that just yet. All right, moment of truth. We are going to power on the PC and hope it works. Nothing potentially went wrong. Ooh, we got some RGB. Nice. Got some nice RGB going on there. Let's hit the power button. Ooh. Nice. Bright. <laughs> that looks nice. So as you can see, it's got a fair amount of RGB cooking inside. It looks, uh, it looks really nice, especially with like the RAM and the, the CPU cooler and also uh, the board. Just, it's a really nice looking system right now. Obviously it's a mess with all the wires. It's so glowy. My new rig. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Prime X570 Pro, BIOS 1005. I don't know if that needs to be updated, it might need to be. AMD Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core, uh, speed 3800 megahertz, memory 32 gig. It's currently operating at 2133. It has to be bumped up to 3600. I'm not, I'm actually unfamiliar how to do that. I haven't looked at the uh, instructions on how to tune my memory up to the proper place, but we'll have to do that at some point. So far good though, guys. Uh, we're getting video out of the card. Um, it's turning on. It's reading the proper things, which is great. Uh, next thing is to install Windows and see if we have any issues with that so far. Oh, also we need to make sure we have all our drives. So we got a two terabyte right there, and then we got 500 right there. Here we go. NVMe configuration. We have the one terabyte. So the SATA drives are popping up, and then the M uh, NVMe drives are popping up as well as NVMe, they're not um, not SATA, which is what it should be, obviously. Uh, so this is great. Now it's time to install Windows. So I have a um, SD card that I put a Windows installation on, Windows 10, most recent. Uh, it's on a USB-C connector, so I'm hoping that it works and there's no issues. Might have a problem with that, I might have to put it on something else. Let's find out though. Asus in search of incredible. It looks like it's working. So USB-C had no problem. Boom, let's install Windows. Yes, install now. Setup is starting. Wonder how fast USB-C would be off that. Okay, drive zero primary. I'm gonna go with that. Next, copying. Easy peasy guys. Easy peasy. Finished installing, it's restarting. Took about four minutes, maybe. <laughs> it's pretty quick. Just a moment, your PC's being set up. Let's start with the region, United States. Let's connect to a network. I have to plug in my ethernet cable. We have officially connected to the internet, that's good. This AMD cooler looks really nice. I'm impressed. Hi, I'm a Windows computer. We're getting things ready for you. Congrats on your new 3900X AMD rig. Ha. Welcome to Windows. Looks like it works. Let's have a look at these cores. Task manager. This is great. Very happy. 32 gigs of RAM. Oh boy, <laughs> yes, I'm very happy. All right, I still got a lot of work to do. I have to cable manage, get all this stuff um, cleaned up. So I better get to that. Okay, day two, very happy with the system so far. There's something that I promised you guys that I would do uh, and I didn't do it yesterday. So I'm making sure I get that and then we're gonna show off a little more of the RGB stuff. I'll did some cable management as well. So it's looking nice in there. So let's do this. Let's see, I maybe start over here with the peel. Oh, yep, yep, yep. I think I should take these off. Let me do that first. 
Oh, maybe I should turn the system on so the lights are on while I peel. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Here we go. So that's the essentially off state colors that are coming through. LED over here, LED over here. It's nice, it's tasteful, it's not overbearing or anything like that. When all the lights are on, it could be on the not so tasteful side, but I actually really like it. <laughs> okay, so peeling. <laughs> the slow peel. <laughs> oh crap. Forgot about the tension that would happen from peeling this uh, wrapper. Okay, there we go. Almost broke my glass, man. This is tempered glass, by the way, for anybody who doesn't know. Oh, oh, oh. Almost broke it again. I scratched my table too. What about that? Battle marks. We're gonna go like this to finish this out. So I don't break anything. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, it's looking nice. I'm very pleased with that so far. Alright, let's put this back on. Uh, also the glass is it looks really clear it's supposed supposedly like got some tinting to it i think the literature said something about some tinting it does not look tinted at all to me which i don't really mind because it looks really nice the way it is oh one thing i forgot i have to put my capture card in here i use a magewell internal capture card so I forgot to do that, but that's okay. Uh, that'll be another time. Here we go, lights. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Gorgeous. <sighs> I'm very pleased with this rig. Very, very pleased. Looks nice. It runs phenomenally. Very, very happy. Another thing too is I updated to the latest BIOS as well. It was 14.05 or something like that. It came with BIOS 1005, which was back in August of 2019. This BIOS is, I believe, December of 2019. Um, so yeah, I got latest BIOS on that stuff. It did help resolve a few device manager question marks that were in there. And then I installed the drivers as well for the board. Um, yeah, so far really, really smooth, really solid. Um, everything's working so far, which is great. Obviously, you know, you spend money on a new computer, you want everything to be working correctly. Um, but no incompatibilities or anything like that. Oh, also, I did do the um, the correct profile for the memory. I was just blind shooting there in the beginning and switched the RAM to 3600, which was clearly incorrect. Um, you're supposed to go to the DOCM or some, some sort of profile thing. It's actually right in the very beginning of the BIOS page and you can select it from default to profile number one or, or I think it was default. I can't remember. Uh, so you select profile number one on there and, uh, and then it automatically sets up all the timings for CL16 RAM, whatever RAM that is, uh, approved by AMD or it's set up for the board and then it works perfect. Now it's 3600. No problems at all. Yeah, I am very, very pleased with this. Again, just jumping into Adobe Premiere and seeing that I could scrub 4K footage, basically, like, there was a couple hiccups here and there, but it was just over like that. Whereas my previous rig, if I was in full resolution 4K, it's like, it's not gonna be smooth. It's definitely gonna get cut in half from the frame rate. And then uh, the, the times it would hang on a particular frame would be like 30 seconds hanging on there while I was trying to decompress all the footage and work with it. So this is just, it's a monster, really. Like, chewing through footage, no problem. And again, the export time, I was like, this is basically a one-to-one -one export, which is really, really good. That's gonna help shave some time off for exports and just make the editing experience very smooth. And that's what I'm looking for on that. And uh, I haven't tried any of the OBS uh, encoding settings yet. I'm excited to see if I can do uh, some low settings. You know, I'm. 
I have two options here. I can encode off of the uh, the GTX 1660 Super because it has the RTX uh, encoder that's, that supposedly is like medium settings when it comes to encoding. Uh, so there's that. But I also like to see if I can use the chip itself to get maybe below medium if it's stable. You know, a lot of people say like, oh, I can do medium on a chip or something, but there's these micro timings that are out of sync and the footage doesn't look smooth. Those are the things that I pay attention to. Like if, you're, if your frame rate isn't smooth, then it doesn't matter if you can actually encode at a certain level. <laughs> you know, it's it can't be choppy or have the weird, weird effects going on because the processor is doing a bunch of information and then offloading it and then getting slowed down, bottlenecking for a moment and then offloading. Like you gotta pay attention to those things with OBS. So we'll see, I'm gonna do some testing on that. Um, but yeah, that is the video guys. Thank you very much for watching my biannual YouTube video here on the Tefty channel. <laughs> uh, most of my YouTube content nowadays is going on the Tefty and Memes music channel. If you would like to support the channel, you can actually go over to my Twitch page and follow me on there and check out my streams. Just stopping in saying hey is always nice. Uh, that is twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. Twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Teft or at Teft, T-E-F-T. Uh, also my Instagram, Teft Teft. And most of my YouTube content nowadays is actually music related content. So if you want to follow me over on the Tefty and Memes channel, I'll put a link here in the video so you can check that out. We're basically doing music jams and electronic uh, synthwave type of stuff. Me and my wife have a lot of fun doing it. It's uh, definitely one of those passion things, passion projects. So really enjoy that stuff. And I love gaming. Getting able to share awesome experiences online with you guys is always just incredible. Uh, that's one of the special things about Twitch. So I, I really do love it. So thanks for all the support over the years. If Again, if you're new to the channel, I don't post very often, usually once every six months. Uh, but I do stream five to six days out of the week as my schedule. So on the Twitch page, you can check me out there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out the build. I'm very pleased with it. It's a smoking rig. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be my workhorse for my content over the next few years. So, cheers. <laughs>